good afternoon. Papers, please. Bye, Angel. Gregson, I'm arresting you on suspicion of importing Class A drugs. This is a very dangerous job you're in. Your wife and kids must worry terribly. Lucky I'm still a bachelor. Yeah. Precaution, Mr. Bennett. It's glucose.
Pallisters can have this lot back with my compliments. I'm off for a bevy. First one of theirs you've lost. Unfortunately, she left her confession till the witness box. <laughs> Got out of tire spots, Mr. Kavanagh. I'm staying home tomorrow, Tom. Mountain of paperwork. That might be difficult, sir. Customs are sending down a brief for next week. Prosecuting? I thought you'd line me up for a GBH. Mr. Foxcock got to it first. Can't be much to the customs matter. It's a return from Ted Fellows in King's Bench Walk. Ted Fellows isn't even a silk. He had a coronary this morning. Didn't think you'd say no to a healthy fee. I don't have much choice, do I? Fancy a pint? All right for some, James. Jeremy. Care of. Oh, I'm sorry. Can I help you, James? No, no. Nothing important. The debt factoring option could increase an individual barrister's income by as much as I've seen that dress before. You bought it two years ago. Oh, it's mm. worn well. Posh do. Claridge's. I could handle that. <laughs> you wouldn't find the Association of Women Executives a very relaxing company. Ah. And to be honest with you, neither do I, but while I'm still looking for the right job, I have to keep networking. Isn't that something fishermen do? I'm afraid I haven't had time to make you anything. Oh, um, Matt's friends are coming here tomorrow night for dinner. 7.30. Matt's birthday? Yeah. Yeah, I hadn't forgotten. OK, Dick, second round. Five. Twenty. <laughs> Matt! And twenty, that's forty-five. I've got your biryani. 45. I'm not hungry, thanks. I'm glad you dropped by. I enjoyed our little chat. Hi. I'm I'm Miranda Lawson. Matt tells me you're a QC. It must be fascinating. It's. Um, it has its moments. There's uh, enough for both of you. Um, we're fine. Yeah, we don't want to interrupt you. He must be very busy. Winning score for the first round, Jim. OK, that's fine. How do you explain this? How about that? Hmm? A jogging memory? Now this one. And this. And this. You ought to say something, Kevin, give the jury the wrong idea. My client is making no comment. Interview terminated at 23.30. What about bail? With 15 kilos of heroin, it could be anyone's. I'm sure the magistrate will be open to persuasion. How much would it take? I never heard that. Well, you know where I am. Your customs briefs arrived. Con at five. It's not all mine. Just carrying this little boat is enough to give you a seizure. Who's the junior? Miss Wilson. She was the only one available. Do you realise how much work is in this? She's barely been doing the job a year. Fourteen months, actually. Cancel your weekend. It's gonna be... A steep learning curve. Have you noticed anything peculiar about Tom lately? His wife's in a psychiatric unit. She's suffering from a bad spell of postnatal depression. Oh. Mm, poor chap. What about his wife? 
As far as I see it, there would only be two possible advantages in taking an appointment to the High Court bench. Never having to toady to a judge again, and my wife would have the exquisite pleasure of booking herself into the hairdressers as Lady Foxcott. <laughs> the rest is just loneliness, creeping senility, and hemorrhoids. And the 60% slash in earnings. Mm. Then do you really want to struggle on into old age at the bar? Don't listen to him, Peter. I think I can wait a while. Could you have a word with Tom before he drives me into early retirement? Yes, I suppose I should. Bringing his problems into work. Yep. Your customs officers have arrived. Great. Only an hour late. Give me five minutes. A sympathetic line with Tom would be best. Lizzie will skin me. I know that tone. I understand there have been a few problems at home. Childbirth is a difficult time for women. They can be a bit funny. It passes. Well, good. Uh, bring her along to the chamber's bash. Get her out of herself. We'll see. What did we say goes on in here again? It's the cutting room. It's where they make the stuff. Those sacks in the corner, 300 kilos of glucose. So if the heroine's cut to 5% purity, they'd look to make 4 million. Wow. What's the significance of this? Cutting is a closed operation. When you're dealing with four million quid's worth, you don't want anybody going in or out till you've shifted it. This amount could take three men, several days. They need feeding. Anything else on Greg's? Yeah, he owns a nightclub in Dagenham, Garters. Five years ago, he bailed out Main Beam Haulage. Bennett used to own it, but Gregson kept him on as a manager. Six months later, he moves to a nice little pad in Surrey. Must have set him back 500k. He's also got a villa in the Algarve and a yacht in Jersey. What sort of yacht? Um... A 70-footer. The born leader. A regular entrepreneur. He reckons he is. How much has he got in the bank? Only a few thousand that we could find. He's clever. The haulage firm does plenty of legitimate business, but we're sure that Gregson's been using it to front a drugs operation for several years now. What's Bennett's role? He signed the consignment documents, all false. The meat in the back was condemned. The company it was destined for didn't exist. Neither of their fingerprints on the drugs? No. No evidence to link them to the purchase? The documents only tie in Bennett. We haven't got a lot to prove Gregson was knowingly concerned with the importation. Unless there's something you haven't told me. Well, you've got statements from all the investigating officers. But they don't tell us where the drugs came from. They were caught red-handed. The jury liked to hear the full story. Wouldn't you? You know how sensitive our sources are, Mr. Kavanagh. If we keep them confidential, it's for a very good reason. Kevin Gregson was charged with conspiracy to commit armed robbery in 84. The trial collapsed when the main prosecution witness didn't testify. He was shot on his way to court. Was Gregson charged? Insufficient evidence. He still got a clean slate. Don't worry, Alex. If anyone else is going to get shot, it's me.
you finished early. Matt and his friends have gone out to a nightclub. I told them not to wait. We only got the papers this morning. We couldn't have a con till late. Never your fault, is it, Jim? Set the agenda for once, can't you? You're a silk, not a bloody tea boy. What am I supposed to do? I can't change the way the system works. I thought you were a persuasive man. My concern is the bottom line. If we want to live like this, someone's got to sweat for it. I'm more than capable of making money too, Jim. That's not what I meant. <laughs> Just hold on to him, will you? What's your address? No, I'll come now. What's happened? Matt started a punch-up in a nightclub, apparently. I'll come with you. I think this is my responsibility. Any other club would have called the cops. We don't expect this kind of thing. We've all been there. He assaulted two of my staff, as well as a customer. Let me know if there's any damage! <laughs> Happy birthday, son. Attack. So, who have we got now then? A QC called Cabiner. He defends mostly. Working class lad from up north, apparently. I'll make him an offer. He looks pretty tight. Wife and kids? No, Danny. She's fine, Kev. I'm keeping an eye on her. Just make sure she stays away from the trial, all right? OK. Turn up anything else on Gregson's finances? Only the one account. Ted Fellows left the papers in a right mess. His heart wasn't in it. Morning. Look, I have to warn you again that alleging customers planted the drugs is not the most attractive of defences. It's what happened. You know my concerns. The jury may have difficulty understanding why they would single you out. Isn't it a bit late to start rewriting my defence? Juries don't want to hear that officers of the Crown are bent, Kevin. Wouldn't it be safer to say that it was down to Bennett? He couldn't organise a straight business, let alone a bent one. Bennett's counsel and the Crown would be very keen for him to implicate you. Is there a risk he'll do a deal with the prosecution? He hasn't got the balls. Listen, I intend to walk. Graham Emerton. I'm appearing for Bennett. Something on your mind? 
Perhaps we might see our way to avoiding the unpleasantness of a trial. That depends what you're looking for. Customs wouldn't be happy with anything less than possession with intent to supply. A tete a tete, gentlemen. Well, it's hardly a conspiracy. Susanna Dixon. I represent Kevin Gregson. He's prepared to plead to the importation of contaminated meat. I don't see any evidence to sustain a case on the drugs. The jury might look a little harder. They can't see what isn't there. Excuse me. You will put my offer to customs. Judge would like to see counsel in chambers. What do you think he wants? <clears throat> an old-fashioned carve-up followed by an early lunch at the Carlton Club, I shouldn't want I simply wanted to ensure a meaningful dialogue was taking place. If Your Honour is suggesting accepting a plea from Bennett and not proceeding against Mr. Gregson, it's quite out of the question. I'm sure you'll be mindful of the pressing obligation to save expensive court time, Mr. Kavanagh. Guilty pleas to accounts acceptable to the Crown will, of course, receive the appropriate discount. The lorry left Harwich shortly before 12.30 p.m. Gregson arrived at the yard at 3 p.m., a few moments after the lorry. How long after were the defendants arrested? A matter of minutes. Was anything found in the lorry? Pork carcasses. My officers opened them and found 15 kilos of 80% pure Afghan heroin. Have you any idea what that would have cost? About half a million. Precisely what was the load in the trailer? Condemned meat. The refrigeration unit wasn't even switched on. I understand there's a black market for that kind of meat, and if you're prepared to take the risk, it's easy money. I have come across it. Who arranged this importation? Bennett signed the paperwork. Bennett was the grafter. He ran the business day to day. Mr. Gregson only looked in now and then. Gregson came into the yard almost as the load arrived. How long did you have people watching Main Beams Depot? Thirteen and a half weeks. If you hadn't come up with a result after three months, might not your judgment be called into question? I'm not sure I understand that. What is your point, Miss Dixon? I'm suggesting these drugs were planted in the trailer by your officers. I plant flowers, miss, not drugs. Last year, Mr. Gregson's income from his two businesses was in the region of £120,000, wasn't it? Something like that, yes. But even a man of his means would have to dig deep to find half a million pounds. I assume so. You have to make assumptions, officer. Because you have absolutely no evidence of my client parting with money to buy drugs. Have you? No. There's no evidence of Mr. Bennett sharing Mr. Gregson's high life, is there, officer? Nothing remarkable, no. At 20,000 a year, he wasn't on the sort of wages that buy 15 kilograms of heroin. We don't know where the money came from. He neglected to put that transaction through the books. What was Mr. Bennett doing in the hour or so before his arrest? He was working in the yard. A flatbed trailer loaded with timber came in. He helped the driver transfer his unit to another trailer. Business as usual. Whatever that was. Well, the only unusual element was Mr. Gregson's arrival coinciding with that of the lorry. No, I wouldn't say that at all. And you have told us nothing which proves Mr. Bennett knew there was anything in the trailer other than meat. The facts speak for themselves. Quite so. Could I refer you to photograph 32? Could you tell the jury what this is? Uh, a workshop lined with polythene. 
The sacs contain raw glucose used to cut the drugs to a lesser purity. What purpose does the polythene serve? It stops the heroin at a thousand pounds a teaspoon from falling through the floorboards. They maximize profits in every way. Wait there, please, Officer Norris. Look at the workshop photograph again. Do you see the shelves in the far right corner? Mm-hmm, I do. And the equipment stored there? It looks like a spray gun. Might not that have been used for the perfectly innocent purpose of spraying paint onto lorry panels? There was no evidence of that. Turn to page 853 in your bundle. Tell the jury what that is. It's a delivery note for 60, 50 kilo sacks of glucose. To whom is the delivery? Barker Soft Drinks Company. Would you read out the handwritten instruction on the bottom? Received 60, six returned. Would that not account for the presence of six sacks of glucose at Mainbeam? Well, it's a possibility, but it's unlikely. The truth is, officer, that for every piece of evidence you say is incriminating, there is an equally innocent explanation. Why not negotiate? We could still get something. Take the both. Thank you. There's not a lot to be said for prosecuting, but now and again it has its own reward. Gregson is going to go. Thank you. And Bennett? He's easily led. He's helping to peddle the stuff too. We'll use him to get to Gregson, if we can. If Gregson doesn't get to him first. I wouldn't mind a word with Emerton. The Ice Maiden has him under close arrest. How are you at subterfuge? I'll think of something. Excuse me. You couldn't do me an enormous favor. It's a rather embarrassing women's business. Shall we have a chat? I'm afraid I'm rather caught out. There was no one I could ask. You haven't got a spare tampon. The machine's empty. Thank you. If your client pleads, I'm willing to accept it on the basis that he played a very minor role. The judge will still give him a discount. Might even get away with three years. Out in 18 months. And that's rather optimistic. Not if he helps to sink Gregson. Well, you can't make that a condition. Put it to him. What's going on? I fancy it's another pud. Do you have a particular resentment towards me, Mr. Kavanagh? We all have to do our best for our clients. Dib, dib, dib. Giving evidence for the prosecution will half your sentence. In your position, it's the most attractive option. And that will make me a grass. Do you know what that means when you're inside? The prison authorities will ensure you're properly protected. But my wife and kids won't be, will they? That's the way Gregson works. Think about it. Who was driving the lorry? Dieter Clausen. We found a mobile phone registered to him in the cab. We got a printout of his calls. What did that printout show? Well, he made a call to Gregson's at uh, 2.30 p.m while he was on the motorway. The defense have suggested that the drugs found in the carcasses may have been planted. Well, that's very unlikely. They were sewn right into the viscera. It would have taken too long. Is there something significant in the way that the drugs were concealed? Well, the carcasses must have been specially obtained, with the offal still in place, to provide a means of concealment. It's enough to turn you vegetarian.
You say the driver telephoned Mr. Gregson at 2.30? According to the printout. Look at exhibit 357, officer. A photocopy of a main beam business card found inside the lorry cab. Yes. There are three numbers on it. The fax and telephone numbers of the main beam office and a mobile number. But it doesn't say it's Mr. Gregson's mobile, does it? No. The photos in the bundle were automatically time-coded by the camera, weren't they? Yes. And photograph 63 clearly shows Mr. Bennett working in the yard at 2.30. If the phone rang at that time, chances are he wouldn't hear it, especially over a lorry engine. Well, that may be. But I've no idea if Clausen phoned the office. The printout doesn't record unanswered calls. It's perfectly possible Mr. Clauston was hoping to contact Mr. Bennett on that mobile number. But Gregson came to the yard. Any competent boss would, if he thought his manager wasn't there to meet a delivery. Photographs 75 to 80, what do they show? Uh, that's me and Officer Lloyd recovering the drugs. Is there a photograph of the carcasses before you opened them? <laughs> well, uh... There would be no point in uh, photographing every square inch before we searched it. But there isn't even a picture of the drugs sewn into the viscera. What on earth possessed you not to record that? Was your photographer put off by the smell? Well, we found the drugs and then had them photographed. Or perhaps you got to the drugs so quickly your photographer couldn't keep up. It wasn't difficult to guess where they were. Did Officer Lloyd tell you where to find them? No, he did not. Photograph 103, a freezer full of unappetizing looking meals. What food is that, officer? Frozen sausage and chips. Is the jury expected to conclude from this that my client was about to spend the next three days turning his business premises into a drugs factory? It's part of the picture. We also found sleeping bags and camp beds. This is a haulage depot. Drivers were arriving at all hours of the day and night, having driven hundreds of miles. You wouldn't expect them to get by on a cup of tea and a biscuit. Mr. Everton? No, Your Honour. Uh, may the witness be released? Certainly. Do you have any more witnesses, Mr. Kavanagh? One, uh, perhaps two, Your Honour. Perhaps this might be a convenient place to adjourn. A new day awaits us in the morning. All rise. I think the Crown is trying to make a deal with Bennett. They want him to turn Queen's evidence. That's the way I would want it in Kavanagh's shoes. He's got no evidence to give. Bennett stands to gain a lot from helping the other side. It won't make him very popular. I should take the threat a little more seriously, Mr Gregson. You'll need to find some pretty heavy ammunition to use against him. See what you can come up with. Not many miles left in this, is there? You could treat yourself to a little sporty number. Pulse cramps. Now the kids are grown up. What do you want? Mr Gregson can be very generous. But he's also got a very vindictive side. Your address is in the book, Mr Kavanagh. I wondered what had happened to you. I was asked for an interview with a new hospital trust. An interview at this time of night? The chairman's on an overnight flight to New York. He wanted to see me before I meet with the other trustees tomorrow. Well, you could have phoned. Oh, well, I know what that's like. Night, night. Open the door. Open. Take secure. Clear.
You are coming to the Chamber's Bash tonight. I think I'm duty bound. He won't play. It seems that Mr. Gregson has powers of persuasion that I simply don't possess. It was worth a shot, James. Would you please tell the court what was in the substance you tested? 80% pure diamorphine, heroin. The remainder was a bulking material, a combination of talc and a chlorine-based bleach. That sounds rather rich compared to what the average addict would buy on the street. Oh, yes, it is. Injected into the bloodstream, even a very small amount could prove fatal. In your experience of these matters, Dr. Weber, what is the most common substance used to cut or dilute heroin? Glucose. It's cheap and it aids rapid absorption, giving the user an almost instantaneous reaction. Cabinet. Yes? Tell your husband I was asking after the family. How big was the sample you tested, Doctor? There were three samples, each of about one gram. These samples came from three separate packages? Correct. But why are there not 50 or more separate packets? So I believe. So all we can be sure of is that three of them contained heroin. Miss Dixon, it's a reasonable inference that a representative sample was tested. The Crown must prove its case, Your Honour, in its entirety. Take over. Get an adjournment. I dare say the Crown could arrange to test every single package, if you insist. Mr. Cavanagh. Your Honour, a matter of great urgency has arisen. Might we have a short adjournment? Yes, I'm going to do that. Oh, it was a bit of a shock. No, I was on my way to the interview. <laughs> Didn't exactly improve my performance. Yes, look, the police are here taking a statement. I'm fine now, James. Call me later. Is there a problem? I'll say. Gregson's heaven has just had a go at my wife. I'm sorry about that. I think it warrants a little more reaction than that. Any minute now, that judge is going to allow Dixon's submission of no case to answer, and Gregson will be strolling straight out of that dock. It's hardly Mr. Lloyd's fault. Your attitude is probably helping that lowlife walk. You've got an informant somewhere who could help put the lid on Gregson. Unless we get enough evidence to put him in the box, we haven't got a hope in I want to see him convicted just as much as you really? do. Really? But what's the point of protecting your source at the expense You're of our case? You're not responsible case. for the safety of our informant. I am. I don't think you quite realise the difficult choices Simon's had to make. I think I do, Miss Norris. And I can just about grasp the fact that Mr Gregson is capable of doing more damage outside prison than he is inside. Mr Kavanagh. I'll get the divisional head to review the decision. What do I tell the judge? We're five minutes away from closing our case. Assume we're calling the informant. Ask him to adjourn until tomorrow. Lucy! Good evening, sir. Hello? Where's Matt? Oh, still skulking in his room. Lizzie, I'm sorry. Oh. I'm so sorry. I'll survive, probably. Mm, rip the bastard's head off. 
And the police are going to stay till it's over. I should never have taken the case. Oh, you had no choice. No. What about the job? Oh, I'll hear tomorrow. I was shaking so much, they probably thought I was deranged. That'll be fine. Come with me to the chambers, Bash, eh? I don't think I can face it. I'm not leaving you alone with a young policeman. Come on. James, Lizzie. Ah, Jeremy. Elizabeth, you're looking radiant. Thank goodness you come. Ellen has spent the last half hour discussing the minutiae of fuchsia cultivation. Fuchsia's my favorite. <laughs> Absolutely. But they're, they're so exuberant. Uh, so how's your garden growing, Jeremy, and professionally? Well, I'm currently involved in a long-standing vat fraud. Riveting. <laughs> well, um, I think I need to refill the tanks. Excuse me. Perhaps this wasn't such a good idea after all. It'll be all right, James. Don't worry. How's Lizzie? Putting on a brave front. She's still a bit shaken. The police know who it was? I've got a pretty good idea. One of them tried to grease my palm yesterday. Sophie's just finished taking her A-levels at Rainbow. She's going to read history at St. Hughes. It's mixed now. Maudlin was all men in my day. Well, I'm sure that suits some people. Oh, Tom. Oh, it's such a shame about your wife. Is she feeling better? Oh, she's bloody well cracking up. Oh, dear. Well, I'm sure we all wish her a speedy recovery. Bonnets. Shall we look at the seating plan? You don't give a toss. Come on, Tom. I haven't finished my drink yet. You know you don't enjoy these things any more than I do. Why not go home? We've all got to work in the morning. How long is that going to last? What do you mean? I oh, know you lot want to get rid of me. Get in some fancy administrator. Where on earth did you get this idea? I know everything that happens in chambers. It's my job, isn't it? No one wants to get rid of you. You haven't got a couple of notes for a cab, have you? Sure. And Tom, your job is safe, all right? Mine, you go. What is this? I'm taking you in. But we've got the deal. Look, I've got no option. You'll be looked after, all right? Come on. You bastard! Listen, you'll do as you're told. Dieter Clausen's statement. I don't think you'll find his evidence takes us very much further. He says that Bennett was the one that organized the importation, that Gregson knew nothing about it. Marvellous. Okay, leave it with me. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's one more thing. Did Lloyd take this picture of Gregson's yacht? I assume so. I wasn't there. The only document we've got from Jersey is the yacht's log. Lloyd must have seized more than that. I have no idea. Well, you've seized vessels before. You know how much paperwork's involved. Well, I'll ask him.
We'd better go and persuade the judge to give us leave to call Clausen. But what's the point? Like Nora said, we know from his statement that Clausen isn't going to implicate Gregson. And he's our witness, so we can't accuse him of lying. Yes, I am aware of that, Alex, but there are other ways. So, uh, what's the story? Can we let Clausen go? Well, I think Kavanaugh wants to use him. <laughs> Is he serious? And he thinks we don't have all the information that we might have done from Jersey. Oh, yes, he's very fond of telling me my job. Yeah, but he has a point, Simon. I'll be the judge of that. Thank you very much. I don't know where you dug him up from, but he seems to be losing it. This is Jenny Norris here from Customs and Excise. My colleague, Mr. Lloyd, seized the born leader two months ago. Oh, well, we've got a bit of a problem. I need another copy of Gregson's registration papers, Mooring's account, and Banker's mandate. Huh? Do you think you could fax them to me? And you had a relationship with Customs and Excise. Could you tell us what that was? I provided Officer Lloyd with information. In return for payment? Usually. Where did the drugs come from? Mr. Lloyd arranged for Dutch customs to provide them. How were they to be paid for? Cash from Mr. Bennett. How much? Uh, 300,000. To be delivered where? Main beam haulage depot. So. On the way, why did you call Mr. Gregson on his mobile? I must have got the numbers mixed up. How long have you known Mr. Bennett? Ever since I started doing jobs for main beam haulage. When was that? About two years ago. I did maybe one job every two months. So you know Mr. Bennett quite well, don't you? Fairly well, yes. What car does he drive? Uh, a Sierra? Would you take a look at photograph number 11? Is that the car? Yes. F. Reg, pretty beaten up. Touch of rust here and there. Turn now to photograph 106. What do you think that is? I don't know. It looks like someone's flat. Let's look a little closer, shall we? Turn over the page. That's the bedroom. No pictures on the wall. Paint peeling. The bed's seen better days. Now to the next page. That's the kitchen. Your Honour, this is all very picturesque, but I'm not sure how it's helping the jury. I was beginning to wonder myself. Your Honour, I'll make the point straight away. Does it look to you like the home of a man with £300,000 in his pocket? Your Honour, how can this witness possibly answer that question? Your Honour, perhaps Mr. Clausen can help the jury with this. What sort of car does Mr. Gregson drive? How should I know? Perhaps we can refresh your memory. Turn now to photograph 23. You recognize yourself, no doubt, and you recognize Mr. Gregson standing by his car. A brand new Jaguar. Really, Your Honor, now my learned friend is cross-examining his own witness. Mr. Cavanaugh, that must be right. Your Honour, I am not cross-examining my own witness at all. It's a perfectly straightforward point that Mr. Clausen can deal with, with me. Your evidence, Mr. Clausen, is that of the two men we've been talking about, it was Mr. Bennett that gave you the £300,000. Yes. Thank you very much, Mr. Clausen. Uh, wait there, would you? Let's hope Edmonton can run with the ball. 
You have four convictions in Holland for drug dealing in a criminal career spanning 15 years. And when you were finally caught by British customs, you agreed to trade information about other criminals in exchange for your freedom. It seemed more attractive than jail at the time. Because of people like you, drug dealers have to be very careful who they trust. Of course. Now, your success in this operation depended on building up a close relationship. A close business relationship with Mr. Bennett, yes. Very strange, then, isn't it, in the context of this close relationship, that you should telephone Mr. Gregson on your way to the depot and not Mr. Bennett? Or was Mr. Gregson privy to this close relationship, too? I was dealing with Bennett. Now, you know, and all the evidence bears this out, that my client couldn't have begun to finance a deal of this nature. He must have had some savings. On 20,000 a year? <laughs> Mr. Clausen, it must be perfectly clear to the jury by now that your evidence is utterly absurd. Who or what are you afraid of? I'm not afraid of anyone. You know full well that if you told the truth about Mr. Gregson, he could make life very unpleasant for you. Isn't that why customs have been protecting you? Hmm? Thank you, Mr. Clausen. Your Honour, that concludes the case for the prosecution. Applying the test of whether the jury, properly directed, could find Mr. Gregson guilty on the evidence presented by the Crown, I find that the evidence of his wealth, taken together with the phone call and his presence at the depot, establishes a prima facie case against him. I therefore find that there is a case to answer. Any messages, Tom? You're wanted in Mr. Foxcott's office, sir. His language was deplorable. In front of Eleanor, too. It's not the first time he's embarrassed us. It's almost grounds for summary dismissal. The man is under considerable pressure, but we can't let it upset the system. He's got no qualifications. Yeah, we pay him an absolute fortune. And in return, well, we get behaviour that, you know, quite frankly, it belongs on the football terraces. A uh, regular at the den, are you, Jeremy? It's the sort of image Buckley puts out what we want in modern chambers. We have to compete with other sets now for the really big cases. You know, we need someone with real skill and finesse. Someone who's educated, yeah. mature, well-spoken, one of us. Do you have anyone in mind? She looks the right sort. Sarah Lee Gordon, aged 40, Cheltenham Ladies, Durham University, Chartered Accountant. Now, where have I seen her before? She's extremely capable. I'm sure she is. Bit old for you, though, Jeremy. She's written an excellent report on how we can increase our cash flow and improve our efficiency. Uh, what other chambers has she turned round like this? Ours would be the first. So she's good on theory. Look, she has an excellent pedigree. So's my old man's dog, but I wouldn't drag him out of the kennel to replace a clerk who's worked with us for 20 years. He's done very little for me. You should try talking to him. Perhaps if we were to discuss this in a slightly more rational fashion. What Tom has is the common touch. Now, with that comes a few rough edges. He made a mistake. Read him the riot act and then give the man a chance. Let's keep Ms. Lee Gordon on file, shall we? My contribution to the business was almost purely financial. I didn't ask many questions. My concern was turning a profit. Did you trust Mr. Bennett? <sighs> But I relied on him completely. I had a nightclub to run. I'm not so sure I trust him now. These businesses were your only source of income? Mostly, yes. Uh, I made a bit gambling. Casinos and that. Last year was good. Picked up about 30 or 40,000.
Would you say things have been going well for you? I had no worries on the financial side until I was arrested. It was suggested to Mr. Clausen in cross-examination that you approached him with a plan to import heroin. I don't know anything about drugs. I never even spoke to the man. I saw him once or twice in the yard, and that is all. It was also suggested to him that you paid for the drugs. I live well enough without getting into that. But they thought I was easy meat. Mr. Gregson, you deny having any knowledge whatsoever of the presence of drugs in the trailer. That's the nub of your defence, isn't it? It was nothing to do with me. Did you know your lorries were carrying illegal condemned meat? I knew they were carrying meat. Well, I assumed it was OK. The smell of it was apparently unbearable, even outside the lorry. Didn't that make you wonder? I didn't notice. You didn't notice the stench from a whole lorry load of putrid carcasses? No. Maybe you've lost your sense of smell. Or just got used to it. Yeah. <laughs> Let's look at income, shall we? Is the £120,000 before or after tax? Before. We'll be generous. Let's say you keep 80 of that. Would that be fair? Ask my accountant. And last year you made 30 or 40,000 pounds gambling? Something like that. In my experience, very few gamblers manage to stay even for very long. I come out on top. We'll give you the benefit of the doubt. Let's say that you take home 100,000 pounds. You have a house worth half a million. What's the mortgage? For God's sake. I don't know. Exactly. Uh, try to be as precise as you can. 250? At 8% a year interest, that's uh, £20,000 plus capital repayments. That must be about £30,000. You've got a yacht almost as expensive as your house. Is that paid for? I presume the yacht is paid for. <sighs> All right, I'll be generous again. Let's assume that you're in debt for half of it. That's uh, £200,000 at 10% a year. That's £20,000. What are the capital repayments? About 10% a year. So that's £40,000 a year for the yacht, plus mooring and maintenance costs. What do they add up to? <laughs> Come on, Mr Gregson. You don't take on a commitment like that without knowing the costs. No idea at all. Is 17500 near the mark? Mr. Gregson. What is this? We're waiting, Mr. Gregson. Give or take. Good. And the villa in the Algarve. What about that? What are we talking? A luxury hacienda by the coast or a mountain shack? <laughs> what do you think? These classy properties don't come cheap, do they? There's the mortgage, the bills, local taxes, a maid, perhaps. And that's before travelling costs. You won't be getting much change out of £15,000. Would that be fair?
That leaves you £2,500 a year adrift. And that's before electricity and council tax. Doesn't leave you much to feed a family. Does your wife take in ironing? <laughs> so, where does the money come from? I told you. I'm a lucky gambler. Really? If I were your wife, I'd be very concerned. Leave her out of this, will you please? Come on, Mr. Gregson. You don't get a quayside spot in St. Helia Marina or a half million pound loan. Thanks to the lucky spin of a roulette wheel, people want to know what you're worth, don't they? With references from banks. There are other ways of persuading people. Oh. You're accustomed to persuading people, are you? What with cash? <laughs> We've just accounted for all your cash. How else do you persuade people? Force of personality? <laughs> How do you get what you want, Mr. Gregson? With the spare cash you haven't got, or by other, cheaper means? In the last five years, you have acquired two substantial businesses, as well as personal assets probably worth over a million pounds. You've told the court you made it lawfully. How? Talk? To my account. He must be very good. Persuadable, is he? Your Honour, this tiresome innuendo is getting us nowhere. Mr. Kavanagh. You've got an awful lot to lose, Mr. Gregson. Up till now, you've bullied your way out of trouble. But if you're found guilty and those precious assets are seized, where will that leave you? And your wife and children? I told you, leave them out. You're a drugs dealer, Mr. Gregson. That's where your money comes from. I don't think so. You knew Clausen as a man who could fix a supplier. You made the deal and then used your depot to cut down the heroin. Rubbish. He called you on his mobile and told you he was on his way with the drugs. You came running. <laughs> you wish. You were caught taking personal delivery. I was set up. It doesn't feel too good, does it, being on the receiving end? Shame, isn't it? Wealthy man. Entrepreneur. Had it all your own way till now. But you can't buy your way out of this one. What do you know? You're nothing. Anyone can buy you. You wish. Mr. Gregson. The jury can see you for what you are. Greed, Mr. Gregson. It clouds the judgment. Mr. Remington, is your client giving evidence? No, Your Honour. I'll hear speeches in the morning. All rise. It's a pity you didn't tell me about Gregson's jersey account before we closed the prosecution case. The Lord's been snowed under. He could have overlooked it. You don't believe that. We all make mistakes. Here. A nice policeman, tell me where you were. Oh. Well? Well, they've made me an offer with a week to think it over. Fantastic! <laughs> mm. I'd forgotten the park was here. When will the case finish? We're into injury time. Maybe we could take next month off. Go sailing in the Caribbean. What's stopping us? We've got lives to run, Jim. We've got to raise the funds to build an entire new hospital. OK, I'll take the time off and look after you. Just win this case.
This isn't so much a case about drugs, members of the jury, as about money. Ms. Dixon will tell you that her client is an honest, hard-working businessman. The Crown says he is a dishonest criminal, a cynical risk-taker who chose the fast track to wealth. Look at the bottom line. 15 kilos of heroin, a transport depot fully equipped to cut it down for sale on the streets, and Mr. Gregson, living the life of a millionaire, is caught meeting the lorry. Where does all this money come from? Not from his businesses. You've heard the figures, they just don't add up. No, the answer is, it comes from turning a 1,000% profit on dealing drugs. have to show beyond reasonable doubt that Kevin Gregson, a man of unblemished character, knew what was in that trailer and arranged its importation. But the best they can offer is testimony from a professional criminal who doesn't even implicate my client. Mr. Kavanagh sought to demonstrate that Mr. Gregson acquired his wealth dishonestly, but he lacked the essential ingredient, hard proof or even any proof at all. Barry? Yes, Mr. Gregson was at the yard when the lorry arrived, but he had every right to be. He owned it. There is not one scrap of evidence presented by the Crown which proves he bought those drugs. There is not just a reasonable doubt as to guilt. There can be no doubt he is innocent. I hate this weight. How can you be so relaxed? I make a conscious effort. Otherwise, my ticker would have gone the same way that Ted Fellows did a long time ago. On count one, it is alleged that on the 8th of June this year, Patrick Bennett and Kevin Gregson were knowingly concerned in the fraudulent evasion of the prohibition on the importation of drugs of class A, namely diamorphine, imposed by the Misuse of Drugs Act 1971. On this charge, do you find the defendant, Patrick Bennett, guilty or not guilty? Guilty. And on this charge, do you find the defendant, Kevin Gregson, guilty or not guilty? Guilty. Gregson, Bennett, stand up, please. Much as the jury would like to have the satisfaction of hearing the lengthy custodial sentences which you will inevitably receive, the law requires me to remind you into custody pending the preparation of pre-sentence reports. But I warn you now not to expect any leniency from this court. Take them down. result was it wasn't that a trifle unorthodox withholding the evidence of Gregson's Jersey account the one thing that could have put him away without endangering your informant I don't know what you're talking about I think you do you've been trying to trip me up from the beginning I think you're getting a bit paranoid mr. Kavanagh <laughs> they seem real enough I think they want a word with you 
Jenny? Please, officer, do you want to come up, I've worked with him for four years. What did you find? Lloyd's insurance policy. The best part of 40,000 in cash and two boxes of files relating to Gregson's offshore accounts. And a statement from his Jersey account showing a £50,000 withdrawal ten days after his arrest. Just around the time Lloyd was in Jersey? Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Gregson had exclusive authority on the account. Lloyd took a bribe. Only 50000 I wonder what they would have paid me. Case next Monday. It's going to plead. But Mr. Aldermart needs a leader in the Court of Appeal. Sorry, Tom. I'm going sailing. It's private. Money isn't the only consideration. Have a nice time, sir. How is she? She's coming home tomorrow. See how it goes. Give her time. My door's always open. You didn't have to do all this. I've been mad eating for about three days. How is he? Well, gorgeous Miranda is going out with the brother of one of his classmates, Charles Fordham Viscount. Uh, mm. Perhaps I'd better cheer him up. What happened? They'll both go down. Gregson should get about 14 years. Never pop at maxims. A girl I was once keen on buggered off with a friend of mine because his dad had bought him an open top Triumph Herald. I got pie eyed on Sweet So Turn and hangover for a month. <laughs> this won't even give you a headache. She wasn't that wonderful. Just thought she was. To a short memory. <laughs> 